kids are sad sheets. I like to pee outdoors. You should follow me on Twitter. Let's watch. It's Jokes to Car Movie. Not duh, like duh. Oh, that's funny. It's duh, like French. So it's Jokes to Car Follow me now. With my Google Speed Go Man. Oh, I'm going to have a little coffee. Hang on, Carl. Sounds great. That was oh. a good theme song. Oh, that was a, some good theme song. <laughs> that theme song is courtesy of Carl. Carl, thanks for the courtesy. Ah, gracias, gracias to you, my friend. Carl, let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike yes. Spiegelman and Carl. Welcome, listeners. Uh, you might be listening to us live as we broadcast live every Sunday, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, on muniradio.fm. You can find our podcast drops every Sunday afternoon unless there's something horrible. It drops? Yeah. It <laughs> drops on the street. Uh, We're so cool. I used the verb right. You did. Yeah, I'm like, uh, get shorty. Uh, I'm like on the music, <laughs> the Be Cool, the sequel. So you can uh, go to iTunes. You can go to mutinyradio.fm and look for us. We are listed by our acronym L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube. If you use those initials, you can find us on Twitter and our own YouTube channel. But go to our blog spot. Okay, you got a pencil? L -W Let's watch a, a full-length movie on youtube.blogspot.com. And that's our... We rap, about, we rap about movies. We talk about the films we see. And you can, the idea of this podcast is that we're going to watch a movie on YouTube with you. Uh, and we want you to watch it and listen to this podcast at the same time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And these are movies that up. I've read about or I knew about, and I never had the opportunity to see them. But now they're on YouTube, so we can all see them. We don't have to read about them. I'm with the concept. Carl, what's the movie today? This movie is so great. This movie is Joysticks, and it's 1983. Uh. It is... In your search engine, you'll, in YouTube, you'll put in no space, J-O-Y-S-T-I-C-K, 1983. Do you spell joysticks with a space, Carl? Is it an open compound word for you? I would spell joystick sticks with a space, yes, but 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 this movie did not. They, they didn't have time for a space. <laughs> All right. There was a working title to this film, something really dumb. I'll find it in my notes. All right. So uh, which channel? Here it uh, is. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No, no, please. Video please. Madness. That was the working title. When they were shooting it, they were like, we're doing Video Madness. All right, Video Madness. Come on. Video Madness, take two. <laughs> but then, then it sounded like some better. bad SCTV uh, sketch from like two, quarter to two in the morning, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> Well, how, how will people know this is about guys' penises? So, uh, <laughs> this movie is hosted on which channel? Okay, so there's two choices. When you search for um, Joysticks, No Space, 1983, you will come up first with um, something. It's it, The uploader is Gliss Switson, uh -huh. G-L-I-S-S. -S, I can't make this up. Uh, S-W-I-T-S-O-N. Gliss Glis Switson. Glissening Clitson. But there's a better version, not so much better. So if you want to stick with this one, it's fine. It's it's like four or five down, and it's B H O O P U. That's the uploader. B H O O P U. Right. Let me find that. D H. Bahupu. D H. Wait a minute. Oh. Wait, it's um, uh, it's boy Haupt, octopus octopus penis umbrella. <laughs> like nobody's ever seen a penis umbrella before. Oh, I, I use a penis umbrella. It's like a drink. You take a little cocktail drink umbrella and you just stick it right in your, <laughs> your pee-pee hole. It's, it's not painful at all. You know, I don't no, see this either. version. I see a version for, that's been viewed two Go. million times and it's Dono Vinci. I don't you see, see a different version? What is it called? Uh, Dono Vinci. 
Okay. Two um, million times. I don't have experience with that one. Okay. No. So let's let's do your version. Go ahead and spell the channel, and we're gonna type it in. Okay. I think the better one is B H O O T U. Boy, Haupt, yeah. octopus, octopus, pussy, undressing. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna go search for that. H O O P U. All right. Hang on. It's I gotta, um, oh, clearly oh. Hindu, Hindi. All right. Boop, boop. Poo poo! I see one subscriber, one video. Um, it says four thousand and one views. Correct. Well, I'm looking. <laughs> All right, hang on. Let me try this one. Okay. That's the welcome video. Am I close? Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, Joyce. Okay. I see Joyce Stick. Joystick right. comedy Joystick full movie. Joystick comedy full movie. Okay, all right. So there we go. So I, I, okay, I know not what the fuck plural is. audience. Sorry, I got gotcha. you. All plural. right. So this version we're not seeing. It's not plural. It's not the version that's been viewed two million times, but it is a version. Right. Is. So go click on that and click pause. Right when you see the star, the the sunny clouds, meaning another quality movie is coming your way. Yeah. Yeah. Quality <laughs> movie with clouds, blue clouds. Okay, so we got Joystick Comedy, full movie, in 2017. This is courtesy of the channel Boo uh, Poo, B-H-O-O-P-U. Yeah. Wow. What boy helped octopus, octopus, pussy underground. Uh, pussy underground, better, that's better. Pussy underwear. That's better. Oh, I'm killing it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we're going to go play. Do you, do you need to do the computer now, Paul? Tweet that out, man. All right, so why don't we have Paul do the countdown for us? Oh, Paul's here. Great. Hey, Carl, oh. what's happening, buddy? Hey, <laughs> what's happening, my man? All right, here we go, folks. Get your finger a hovering and want to do a countdown from three, two, one, play. Perfect. He's great, isn't he? He has a radio voice. That's the thing. Yeah, he has a voice for radio. How much is he? Is he expensive? But, uh, uh, so we're watching Donovici. See, Donovici was the other channel. Kick. They just took the other, the uh, posting from the other channel. The other channel goes straight into the video game. It doesn't do all this. Uh, oh, this Donovici is very is important. Part of the experience. Look, a roll of film could look like an F and a J. Or a tie. Jensen Farley pictures. Jensen Farley. Jensen! Get in my office! Boss called me by my first name. Farley. That's too Farley. Benson's gone too Farley. All right, pole position. I recognize this game. Right away, I have to tell you, and especially the audience, all these games are real. It's not yeah. some movie bullshit. That's yeah. one of the great things about this film. You're going to see Pac-Man and That's Super Moon Pac-Man. Patrol. And We're watching Moon Patrol right now. It's a real Joe video Don game. Don Baker. Oh, uh, that's Galaxian. That is a. Uh, the one with the crazy joystick. Oh, so now, look to... at her hair, okay. Mike. Yes. She is, I mean, 19, late 1970s was yesterday to this year, right? Right, so 83. I'll, I'll accept that. She is a leftover, even though she's a young Defender. one. That hair, that attitude. Uh, uh, um, workout clothes are on, right? Right. She's the wrong 70s for this movie. This is 83. Well, she's a California girl, Centipede. Bingo. You know, so this was shot all in L.A., by the way. Yeah, so, you know, Carl, I read a lot about this movie, too. I, I saw the poster in 1983 at the our movie house in Montclair, New Jersey. The Wilmot uh -huh. was showing it. And it has a very famous movie poster where it's these two women who are, look like this woman right now. And they're, yes. they're grabbing the joysticks of a video arcade machine. And unbeknownst to them, in the change booth, there's a little guy sticking his head out, <laughs> looking at their muffs. Dorfa. And Dorfa. I, you know what? This movie should be gay. Right? Joysticks. <laughs> and then yeah. instead of these two women in shorts, they'll just be these guys with big cocks. And the guy's like glory <laughs> hole, like length anyway, in that poster. <laughs> it's backwards glory hole. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to see the now guy's look, that face. Is the flat, that is the fat, suave character of this. He's like a video game expert who maintains the key to the arcade. And his name is Jonathan Andrew McDorfus uh -huh. in, in the movie. And they call him Dorfus, like Doofus. Oh, I see. But you have to really know that. Graydon Clark, this guy is incredible. He made three movie movies expert. this year. 
Yeah, he directed this movie, but he directed Joe Don Baker in a parody of Psycho called Wacko, and then he did a serious crime film with Joe Don, and they did it in like two years. This is like the third movie he's done with him. Beautiful. This is what this, California looks like. This movie was shot in like 13 days or three weeks, depending on which internet version you believe. This is like a nerd character. Uh, his name is uh, Eugene Broby. He's played by a guy named Leaf Green, which I always thought was funny because like, it sounds yes. like green, green leaves, you know? You need to smoke a couple green leaves to sit to this movie. Leafy greens. I got to tell you something. He does a good job as a nerd, Mike, but... You can tell he's not really a nerd. He, he's he, pretending. He's like a jock disca- uh, acting, a jock actor. That's the problem with mm-hmm. jo- jock actors is that you can tell when they play nerds, there's a little bit of jock in them. <laughs> yes. Uh-oh. Okay, Come, so what's well, happening They're here? showing the boobies. And these are 70s. They're t- yeah. Look at him. Uh, my nerd braid is exploding. They just pulled them Those down. Those are like 22-year-old t- I'll say it's Mike, just, I want to say something about the day. You saw how petite those boobs were, yeah. right? Uh-huh. You know if that was shot in 2017, 2018, right. it would have been the nicest rack of cans that you could buy. It would be very taunt and tan, I'm sure. <laughs> Nothing but perfection. Okay, so Keep talking, girl. this scene right here was shot without a permit, without any permission, okay? And they're just on the street doing this in L.A. And roll them. And cars would come by and go around. So what's happened is these girls have, have found out that he works at the arcade. He's Wait, like the video a, game arcade? An employee there. So he's picking, oh my God, the actor's touching the actual <laughs> nipples. Great? He's touching their nipples. He really is. Yeah. Now, I'm glad I wasn't the director of this film because I would have fucked it up. I would have made horn sounds. <laughs> Ahuga. You would have been wow. like, you, okay, now I want you to touch her nipple and say, oh, it must be cold. And say it must be cold every time you reference her nipples. And go. <laughs> it must be cold. Okay, we got you. All right. <laughs> He's burning in his face. Okay, now, what they did is they talked to themselves privately, and they're like, listen, let's just give this nerd a free ride for a little while. And, you know, he'll let us into the arcade. We can be close up with the owner. I'll tell you the name later. Stuff like that. Like, you'll get in good at the arcade. By doing what? Showing their boobies and then, like... But, yeah, like rubbing up on him. He's the, So he's like... Um, they haven't he's left the street. Paid, uh, he had a nickname for his peepee. I should have told you to listen, uh... Okay, they got to turn the sound on. Maybe it comes up right now. It's a dumb way. Took a picture, Polaroid picture. Don't! Yes. Oh, look, here comes finally. You see cop. this cop? That's real. Oh, yeah, they The cop came shoot. and they gave him, like, kiss ass star treatment. Hey, hey, my man! Everyone gave him an autograph. And he let him keep filming. Wow, his pink uh, pants. So, all right, so this movie is mentioned in a couple films books there's a great book called punk rock movies which talks about every film that has punk rockers in it and they talk right. about surf too a lot and they actually interviewed the uh, the villain in this movie king vidiot who is of course a punk rocker with his team of punk rockers and that actor himself is actually napoleon dynamite i read an interview with him recently in shock uh, cinema john Le really? yeah he's the creepy uncle and uh Wow, look at this. Oh, arcade. wait. Okay, I'm so sorry. I thought you meant Napoleon Dynamite himself. No, yeah, it's yeah. creepy uncle, right. Right, the uncle. He's the punk, yeah. I don't think John... He's good, he's good. Yeah. Play me. Okay, I got to tell you for a plot point, on the left there yes. is like the daughter of our heavy, of our bad, bad guy, okay? Okay. The bad guy, he's been like, uh, he's like a pillar of the community, and he just hates his daughter being there, and he makes a lot of trouble for them. Now, you see the guy talking with the thin tie, the thin 80s yeah, tie? Yeah, the thin 80 ties and the thin 80 short sleeve shirt with yes. the tie. This is our hero, and um, he was in Star Trek. I mean, like, when I saw his face, that's when I remembered him. Do you remember the scene from Star Trek? Star Trek, the TV show and our movie? It's Star Trek, the third movie, The Search for Spa. Oh. He was with Uhura in the... You're probably not a geek like me that likes Star Trek so much, no, but I, I've seen I really it. loved it, and 
I like Star Trek. He was in the Transporter Ooh, Wizard of War. War or something. Look at that woman playing Wizard of War. I've never seen a woman play Wizard of War before. That's <laughs> a two-player game. Look, she's totally nerding out on him. The nerd recognized nerd. Right, and he's got no pants on. You know, yeah. got, they got ripped off. So a nerd walks into a bar pantsless. What? Now, Look at our this. hero here, he's the head of the arcade while his grandfather is gone. Okay. What's with the malt, malt shop behind them? What? There's like a 1950s malt shop. Like that's. What I didn't gives... notice that. Uh... It's not a. By bar. the way, this arcade is not a real place. They made it in yeah. a warehouse. No, I, I read that uh, in the in their interviews. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and you'll see exterior shots of the arcade, um, especially a lot of them with our punk hero yeah. and uh, or bad guy. And um, look, see how they're rubbing his peepee. Right, and look at they literally the... are. <laughs> well, they could be stunt hands. You hire prostitutes to do those close-up shots because they're, used, they're <laughs> they know what to do, and then you write off no. the prostitutes as a tax expense. Look at him right there. You see him? No, you walk, can walk, tell walk, that walk. he's not really a nerd. Can we, can he's a address, cool guy in nerd costume. Can we address the elephant in the room? We just had okay. a Pac-Man cutaway, right, with the picture of Pac-Man going, and we watched. Yeah, a dozen, you'll see that throughout this entire film. And right. we've seen a dozen footage from a dozen video games, and we see the video games in here. Do you think the producers paid any money or called any? Uh uh. How eighties is that? Uh, he's back to normal. God, the cocaine okay, back then. Okay, now he, he's about to encounter Dorfus, the one who's in the poster that you were talking about. Oh, yeah. He's the Bluto of uh, Joysticks. Look at him. He leaves him right. Oh, he's a fat guy. They're going for gross out here. But he generally looks gross. Excuse me, young man. Would, you've got to stop playing the games. We're dancing in the streets. We covered this <laughs> song. Dancing in the streets for the Look at his face. Joysticks. Yeah, he's acting, Carl. Okay, now this guy is uh, Jim Leaf Green. Lee- Greenleaf. Jim Greenleaf. Oh, he's the slap, uh, fat slob character. He's a video game expert. So this guy, right, he was first on the Gong Show. He did a skit of like a ping pong match in slow motion, and it got the attention of Norman Lear of all people. And he called him and gave him a, a lead role in the show called All That Glitters. That it was a hit. But huh. you and I know him from Surf too. Oh, do tell. Well, he's one of those gross fat boys. Remember, they were eating yeah. disgusting stuff on the beach. Were they zombies or were they just eating? No, they were the two. They were just eating. They were in zombies. Right. I think it was like uh, sandwiches and yeah. stuff. And Well, he's breaking into a Pac-Man machine. That is well, totally no. He's, he, he opened it up and he looked at the technical thing about it. And he's seeing what the sticks, you see. He's like, what can I stick my dick in? No. The point is like, he's a crazy expert with games. So he created Match.com or fucking Facebook too <laughs> in real life. <laughs> This guy was going to have a great career, but then he got into a car accident. This guy was on Mork and Mindy. Uh, he was on Laverne and Shirley as a regular. He, on, um, he started James at 16. Do you remember that show? Yeah, I remember James at 16. I'm That's a little a bit older show. than you. Are you sure you remember? No, it? it's it was a like 70s two years show. Before I'm, your I'm, I'm familiar with James. It is, it is before my time, but I know the show. Yeah. So James at 16 was 1978, in which I was like 12. I definitely was a regular watcher of that show. It was like a first time, you know, something serial. You know, it was interesting. <clears throat> this guy was on it. That's how he started. Huh. He was on Night Shift. You know that movie, Henry Winkler? Oh, of course. That's uh, Oh, look, there's a hot dog between her boobies. And her yeah, they're just it doing up. another sexy gag. See, this is the thing. Like, people will say, like, oh, I... When it comes to bad movies, we can't movie riff comedies or because they're already bad. But I love bad comedies. Only in this world does this exist, right? In real life, yes. remember the time this woman came and she had a hot dog between her tits and you had to like pull it out in front of all these luring guys? Uh oh, here's the videos. This music is so generic. Oh, you know his name, the video it, idiot? Yeah, that's so right. There he is. This performance is the best. This is the most fearless. Now, as you said before, this is John Grise. 
And in Napoleon Dynamite, he was Uncle Rico. Yeah, right. And he does something completely different in Uncle Rico. Look at him, he's fucking... But, like, he's always been in movies and we just didn't know it. Right. He was in Men in Black as the van driver who was, like, disgusting bugs. He was in The Rundown as one of the hoods. The Rundown. He was in all of the Taken movies. He's been under our nose. Yeah, well, I think he, like, he kind of had a, a 70s presence, right? Like, he did a... He kind of had what? I get him and another actor mixed up, but there's uh, I get him. Well, there's James Legrosse, right? There's, I I don't know actually. Right. Yeah. Here he is. He's Take the... your position. Start game. Oh look at that. the girls are moving around like Pac-Man. Yeah, that's right, and they don't get much other action. That's what those girls get. They they pretend they always act in unison, and they're it's like they're henchmen for him. Uh huh. But na na na. King Vidiot and his mindless henchmen have hit the video arcade. <laughs> Here's our heavy. Here's our heavy. Look at jo jo Joe Don Baker. Never looks better. You know he's a Texan just by looking at him, even though he isn't in this movie. Well, he has such a thick accent. There's no way. So, like, this guy wasn't ever really in the biggest thing ever. I mean, he established himself as a Western cowboy action star, you know, in the fifth on the TV. But, but he, you know, his face because he's been in a million movies, but he was never in that great role. Well, Remember no, that? I, I disagree. I disagree because he was in Walking Tall, right? Walking Tall, right? Two and three. Yeah. And he, yeah, played, he was uh, the big deal in Walking Tall. That kind of was his big break. Yeah. He was a football player beforehand. I'm going to take a guess. I don't think he was a football player. But no, he, he, um, he played Felix. But I don't have my background in front of me about him a hundred percent. But he has played Felix. Do you remember Felix from the James Bond movies? The, the cat. No, <laughs> the, yeah, the cat. The wonderful. Do you ever? He's a wonderful. Hey, you know, have you ever tried Felix's bag of tricks? Oh my god! <laughs> oh man. I was okay, the, this guy uh, again, yeah. Scott McGinnis. You never I, saw him on Star Trek? Wait, Ted McGinnis, you said? Scott. I is know. he the brother of Ted McGinnis who is in Married with Children and Happy Days? Uh, I don't think so. I think so. You mentioned that movie Wacko? Yeah. He was in it. He played Norman Bates. Okay, so there you go. So they, so that's also by the same director and had Joe Don mm -hmm. Baker. Oh, fast yep. so farted. One time he was on um, Facts of Life. <laughs> he smelled his own fart. Anyway, even though maybe you don't know it, but he played a young lieutenant dubbed as Mr. Adventure by Uhura, you know, when they were in the transfer room in Star Trek Three, And that's what makes it exciting to... Okay, so hang on a second. For me. What, what an amazing body. Mama, can I have some then? Pardon and she has you the know, greatest I accent. think you cut it lettuce once or was a cabbage. Okay, now there's the mom. Um, excuse me, there's the daughter, and she's doing Valley Girl. At least I didn't take them. I think they're dubbed it in. All right, now, Patsy, we have an understanding. You will not go to the arcade again, right? Here we go. Daddy, if I want to go to the arcade, like, I am going to go. Okay. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> okay. No one talks that way. Well, anymore. she certainly does go to the arcade every day, and that chafes this guy's ass, and he's going to make trouble for the. I'm watching Fat for the arcade. make like a fat sandwich. It's ketchup on something. So Scott McLean, this guy, is, I think his brother has to be the actor Ted McLean. Uh huh. So Ted McGinnis, Ted McGinnis is an actor who shows up in Happy Days. He marries Darcy in Married with Children. His last name is like Marcy. His last name is Darcy, and she became Marcy Darcy. Hmm. Does that ring a bell? No. All right. I think for me, brothers, for me, I don't know. What do I looks, know? He looks exactly the same. They look like brothers. I okay. called it. Nailed it. Nailed it. McKinnis. You want me to check a proof fact? A fact proof it? Nah, I can't even pronounce <laughs> say, you call it. You can that shit. He snopes it. Uh oh, when the vans are knocking. And the vans are yeah, rocking. he goes, I put you in charge of official parking lot uh, observer. Go see what you can find and report back to us. But remember, they might not want to be disturbed, but they <laughs> are going to get disturbed. Oh, look at it. They got a big old hole Ooh. in that shack covering. They got a hot tub Ooh. in there? Look at those tits. You see the boobs? 
Look, she's not mad. No, she doesn't mind. Whoa, I fell to the hot tub. Look at the smile. Did you see the smile? Yeah. Well, the guy's happy. He's got another able body in this hot tub. What I mean is you can tell from this, like, it's not a real thing. It's like, okay, roll them. Because if you oh, right. fell into your hot tub, you wouldn't be like, Let's oh, just, this is hilarious. You have a Pac-Man right? wipe into the other scene. Pac-Man goes across the screen. I'm sure Namco mm -hmm. is like, yeah, you could use our character. No problem. Right? You, right. You can't do that now. You get sued by Pac-Man. Oh, by the way, I was thinking, I should take you to the video arcade to my 12-year-old. So I went down to Willowbrook Mall. Oh, the, the Of course classic. it's closed. Eight years ago, you know, years and years ago it was closed. Right, it was Fun and Games Video Arcade at, uh, yep, at yep, the yep, Willowbrook yep. Mall. And, it was, you know, it was a golden age because it was a Chuck E. Cheese right outside the mall. So you could hit two arcades, technically. They're showing the picture that they got of him in the car. They're teasing him. They tease him out throughout the whole thing. But look at his face. He's not a nerd. He's a cool kid, and he's got glasses on. He put on a wig. Right. Well, he's he's just Jewish, that's all. Now, this game looks good. <laughs> She's looking at lips. Free it's, a Pac it's a Pac-Man ripoff where the like, blue cops are chasing uh, a burglar around a, a maze full of dots. Yeah, listen, let me speak to that. This film, that this uh, video game that you're seeing here absolutely was... They're, oh, by the way, they're playing strip video game. Ha-ha. Uh, ha, ha. Okay. How can they get away with that? <laughs> Will the problem um, not do this? You know, the blonde is very small in the chest area, yeah. but she's well for it. She looks like a little doll. A Barbie, Barbie doll. <laughs> Right. Of course, Mike, I know you're a pig like me. Okay, let me speak to yes. this game. I just want to say that this is 100% a Pac-Man ripoff. Right. But it was a real game of the day, and Pac-Man is 100% featured in this game. You know the uh, this film. You know the company Midway? They right. made Pac-Man in the United States. That's right. Do you know? Yes. Okay. They were completely partners with uh, this Graydon Clark, and... They, they, he licensed the image of Pac-Man, no and they were way. like, "Fine, have it for dirt cheap because we want you to do it." And they, this great on Clark said, "Listen, do you have a game that's coming out because we can feature it in the movie, Which and then do. everyone will get hyped about it and buy it." Which they do. Yeah, two games. The main one is called Satan's Hollow, and Which, we'll see yeah. it like in a like I dare you to go against me. If I win, you get the arcade. If you lose, we close. Or Satan's you know. Hollow is basically like a Space Invaders game where you have a ship in the bottom of the screen and you have to shoot above. Mm -hmm. What are we watching? Hello? And then... Uh, <laughs> um, we're nice, watching nice a, a time before pornography in your on your telephone. That's what we're watching. You well, have to go to the movies to see this stuff. Yeah, Ted's brother has got two ladies back to back on him. <laughs> What about the video game contest? Ted's brother. Ted's brother. We don't even know that. Scott. Uh, hey, what is Pluto pouring into the uh, love shack? It's Some type um, of gas. like a fire. Actually, it's a it's a um, a fire extinguisher. But they're saying like, oh, it's a fire and the alarm's going off. Um, <laughs> they they're putting it in there like a kind of prank. You know? Yeah. Uh, Oh, and then he ran out of the... <laughs> And there is... It, look, you see, they ran into the bad guy's arms, and then they took a picture of him, as uh, if he was part of the madness down at the video arcade. I they, need that Polaroid! That Polaroid give you that, took! Give me that Polaroid! Give me that! No. Okay, so here comes the daughter to distract him. Oh, I like the daughter. And he's like, I told you never to come in here again! Okay, this is the external... God, it's like of the arcade, but it's really the warehouse. Now, that guy was in like, Stripes. Do you recognize his face from yeah, Stripes? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think it was Drifter. What was his name? Oh. Let me see. I must have it here. Dean Stockwell. Oh, Cruiser. In Stripes, his name was Cruiser. But the thing is, you see him here, and you see his young self, and you see Stripes in him. But if you saw his face as an older person, you know you would know his face from movies too. He was in 
Jurassic Park 3 as Cooper. He was in Miami Vice as yeah. a regular. Yeah, I know you're talking about. God, yeah. This is so weird. With I really... an old person's face. No, I've seen this movie a couple of times, and I always thought they just ripped off Pac-Man without paying for it. So it amazes me that they fucking handed it over to them to this movie. Yeah. The, you know, consider the year. They this know what buttered their bread. Um, yeah. They this want... one here is... Uh, this one here is, 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 is John Boldstadt. He was in Forrest Gump. He was in Leprechaun. He was a regular on New Heart. He was in Stripes also. Huh. He was in Charlie's Angel series, Chico and the Man. He was a regular. Now they're dressed up in costume, and this guy is supposed to look orthodox. Well, you see, they are. Yeah, he's an orthodox. <laughs> That's right. They're the the nephews of our heavy. They're kind oh. of like henchmen. Oh, they're like pretending so, to be hippies. No, it was go down in disguise and like find out some crap about some weakness. Oh, here's okay, a now. Our hero, right, the punk here, is like pretending that he's sexually excited by Maxine, who's of course Max dressed up. Nice is it? Okay. John Grise. The other girls in the crew don't seem to get jealous at all. Yeah. Well, they're just. By the way, he's not a hippie. He's just a hippie. Oh, yeah, no, he's just a hippie. You could tell by the hippie hat. Don't forget the time, right? I mean, the 60s was just yesterday. Yeah, yeah it was just in yesterday. In 1983. And, they were, and that was square. That'd be like if we dressed up as punk rockers and we went into a millennial right. video arcade. Kabam! Wow, I'm a hippie. He's pretending to be They're a hippie looking inside of for video flaws. Arcade. Okay, here's a joke that's an insult against uh, the Chicanos of L.A. All right. You see, they, the, the car's all tricked. It's all tricked out. The video game, like a car would be. And he's playing the character of both Cheech and Chong. It's weird. Let's see. No guy with ugly chick gets to play my mission. He's got a bobblehead chihuahua on top of the arcade cabinet. <laughs> Oh, so he's got a contest? I hate when you walk into the arcade and they like, come on, we're going to hit you up, battle. Well, they're not going to do a contest. We're actually not seeing a plot point. They just thought okay. they should drag this out. The joke is the machine is all tricked out. He's like, not anyone can be on this machine, senor. You know, ha ha. Oh, well, you go play Wizard of War. It's done. Yeah, that's kind of stupid, right? Wow, it's so amazing these arcades allow them to do that. See, this movie is bad as well as good. I mean, it is a B movie. It right. is B. But the thing is, it was a perfect movie for its day. All Space of these Dungeons. video games are real. It's There's a game like Space a Dungeon? snapshot at a time in which there were arcades. You know, it's... Yeah. He's going like, Mrs. Pac-Man, just like me. And now he's getting into being a girl. Uh, I never heard of the video game Space Dungeon. What's a Space which, Dungeon, Carl? Is it like a which one? It's he the hippies behind a game called Space Dungeon. You see Dungeon oh, behind his, So like I don't know. What's a Space Dungeon? Is it like an outer space? There's a cave, and inside the cave there's a dungeon. Is there a basement to outer space? A dungeon is is like by definition underground, right? Okay, right. So how can you be in space and be a dungeon? Yeah. You can't be underground. Okay, oh, so the nerd heard the, it all. I have to let you know. The nephews just said, "Hey, I got an idea for Uncle to really love us. We'll come back here in the middle of the night and we'll steal all the games. Uh oh, and like rest the place. Oh, look at uh, this. They're out of here. Sexually That's inappropriate. Stunts. He's such a ham. Yeah. Listen He's here. Good. I saw. I saw the two guys dressed in costume. Right. And, they right. said, and they're going to come back here tonight. Well, we can't let that happen. Right. So what now, can the thing we is, do? He's not like, I'm going to call the cops. He's like, no. He's like, I have an idea. We'll this kill their the family. Yeah. I got a plan. All right. So what's okay, the... Okay, now, for some stupid reason, Nerd and Fatso uh -huh. are going over to Bad Guy's house. 
Okay. Can we, can we call him something else other than Nerd and Fatso? Like maybe oh. like Pack and Pal. Oh, we could uh, 2018, Mike. Okay, <laughs> let me think here. We could call them... Super Pac-Man. Uh, wait, here. Okay, Smart, let me get my glasses. Here we go. Smart Pac-Man and Fat Pac-Man. We could call them... Okay, Dorfus. Uh-huh. And... Oh, you're just reading their names. Okay, lay screen, lay screen, and so it's Dorfus and Eugene. Okay. Okay. Dorfus and Eugene are breaking in. There's nothing like a good. Now comedy. they're going to go through the second story window, and that's where the the wife character is sleeping, and they will have a sexual encounter. <laughs> Wait a minute! They're going to go into the. The wife character. Oh my god, he's really gonna fall. They're really like out the window. Remember Bluto? This happened to Bluto. Yeah, but he just saw this woman take her, dr- her bra off, and then he fell off the ladder. Yeah, content. He didn't go in there and have sex with her. The thing is, the 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 mom, the wife, she's like asleep. Uh. So. What they're doing with her, even though in her dream she thinks she's having sex or something, it is inappropriate. It's non-consensual. You know what I mean? The woman is asleep. And she's medicated, right? Is that what he's looking at? She's suffocating? What would you say? She's medicated on pills. Oh, is she? Probably. I'm sorry. I guess I missed that even though I saw the film. Did pills drop? He's holding pills in his hand. See? Get a shaky shake. Yeah. So she grabs the crotch. And Dorfus is like, Eugene, you're about to get, you're going to lose your cherry. So stupid. Like this, Dorfus. Come on, help me, please. Help you? Come on, quit fighting. You know, Porky's came out just before this, just prior to this. Yeah, and then they couldn't wait to put out a film like this. I mean, this was like the explosion that Porky's caused with films like these. Mm. And they combined some Animal House, which was 78, but... And Porky's was also a nostalgic thing. It was like, remember when we had, were, went to school in the 60s? Yeah. You know. With all of its strictness and... Yeah, and then okay, the day Okay, here's our henchmen shot. nephews. Are they going to break and- in in the middle of the night? Right. So they're so, he's they're, he's fucking his mom in revenge. Well, the thing is, the mom is like almost molesting him because she's dreaming about having sex. Okay. Right. But at the same time, he's this guy's okay. Now you can see our bad guy is coming, the Texan. Right. So now Dorfus just, has to distract. Dorfus just slams the door in his hand. Uh oh. Until okay. He's gonna turn the light on. And he's hiding in the closet. Well that explains his behavior towards women. Joe Don. He looks like Glenn Campbell, man. <laughs> oh, we're not gonna watch him take his shirt off? Joe Don Baker was in a movie called Mitchum, Mitchell right. that uh, yeah. Mystery Science Theater uh, not only showed, but they showed it oh. as a plot point when they changed hosts from uh, Joel cool. to Michael. They played that movie. And they were particularly funny on that movie. That movie. It's a classic episode, but the movie itself is like he's a private eye and he's just repulsive. You know, his, his art of seduction is bringing a six-pack in bed. <laughs> <laughs> this um. You know, when I talk to people like, what is my show about? I say, well, do you know Your Mystery show. Science 3000? And they go, yeah. And I go, yeah, it's nothing like that. Nothing like that. They, You know how they it's write jokes like and they tell jokes for two hours? <laughs> the truth is, actually, in that, I mean, that's a joke. It's nothing like that. I mean, the concept is kind of like that. But on that movie, what they do is they do a scripted show in which they... Oh, they watch it several times and they, they right. edit it so they can get their words in, in between the dialogue. They work out bits that go with, you know, jokes that go with what's going on on the screen. That's not what you do at all. No, I come in unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is you, you've got this whole theme in which these films that you used to read about you could never see. Now that God has given us YouTube, you can see them. And also... There's always a reason, a backstory why you pick them, you know? And these movie reviews that you told me about, that's coming. 
And part of it is going to be, why did you pick this one? Why oh, did great. you pick that one? Yeah, I want Carl to do video reviews on our site. I have some scheduled for this week. I will, I'll be making content and we'll talk about when to, what to do. You'll, you guide me, my man. So I don't get it. Like, why can't Joe Don Baker realize there's a man in his fucking bed with his wife? Joe Don Baker is the heavy in this, but he's also supposed to be the bumbling fool. So he keeps on, you know, they keep on being able to hoodwink him and trick him. One of the video game titles that they stole was called Hustle. They put <laughs> in the truck. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Okay, what's happening here is he knows that Joe Don Baker was about to catch Eugene having sex with his wife, right? So he goes, ding dong, rings the bell to distract, and now he's making up bullshit. I don't even remember. I mean, it, that's the premise. I don't even remember the comedic bits he does because they're so stupid. I, I, I think he's screaming up, like, you know, to signal Eugene, you should get out now, you know. See, he's screaming up. Yeah. Okay, it's hilarious. All right, so fine. Let me tell you something interesting then, right? This great on Clark, he was screening his film, the slasher film Wacko, which you mentioned, right. right? Yeah. Okay, he's at the opening, the screening, and he notices that there's a line of kids standing in front of a video game in the lobby of the theater. Uh -oh. So he saw how excited they were, okay? And he thought a video arcade would be the perfect you know, location for like a new teenage sex comedy. You know, he could, he could tap into a market. He could see that. And it was when he was, you know, seeing Wacko for the first time. It's pretty cool. They rented all the games from a local retail wholesaler. It's, it's, they're all real games. That's so crazy. See, this game is like the perfect like uh, summary of my life uh, uh, when yep. I was 13. Just titties and Snapshot. video games. Yeah. Um, many times you bring to me a film that's definitely lost money, and that makes it a loser. Right. Not this guy. No, this guy made they a lot of money. They spent 300 grand, and they made almost $4 million. It, You know, in 80s money. Yeah, and, and this is like one of three movies he made. In like yep. a, in an eighteen month period, they filmed in the fall of eighty two, and one source says it was shot in three weeks, and the other source says the production took thirteen days. So I don't know what the truth is, but that's pretty quick. Either one, right? No uh, stopping to think about plot or storyline. So they film in eighty two, and by the third month of of 83 it was in the theaters it says it was the fifth highest grossing in the first couple of weeks it grossed three nine five two you know almost four million in the u.s alone it's amazing uh, this, too. this movie was a success even though it is a b movie you know what's nice about this movie is that even though it's the evolution of video games because these are the video games that were available back then so it's yes. defender and but it, it is in like uh you know they're of a certain vintage they're never going to get past mm -hmm. that so he's still crying to Jodan Baker? That's the thing. It's, it's not believable because it goes on for so very long. No, no. Eugene is like, I'm out of here. Great on And Clark. there's daughter. Yeah. I was so young then. Hey buddy, it's after two in the morning. I really don't care about your problems. But wait, wait, wait. It's about the arcade. Uh, I thought it might be. What about the video arcade? Mr. Rudder, I... It's just that I see Eugene up there. The yeah, he's on the roof. For, for boys and, and girls to, to have a good time. Why, oh, he's he's not there to see him drop that. And having a good time, they, Which guy I means everything this like guy said is bullshit. Eugene. Right, so just by hanging out that long, they, they catch him. <laughs> <laughs> he works here, right? don't you? Yes, I do. Tell him about it. I enjoy my work there very much. <laughs> I, it's a wonderful place to work. It's enough, Eugene. <laughs> I love how like how the the fatso the Pluto is like obviously in his late thirties. Max, are you? Thinking of having it. What is it? So here they come with all of the video games, See, but as you know, they were on to them, and so they 
there are not going to be video games. It's going to be empty. Oh, all right, but they got to give a big speech. Okay, boss, you're going to be really impressed with what's inside this right, truck. Right, right. Yeah, oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I'm rubbing my hands. I can't wait for you to open up this truck. <laughs> Let me see this. We were both going to We're both going to be in stripes one day, you know. <laughs> They're both in stripes, huh? Yeah. And it's empty. Well, that explains why it was light driving it over here. <laughs> and they're like, don't worry, I rented it in my name, Uncle. You right. got me. So you know this is good music playing because the cassette has two bars to show you. Look, Space Dungeon. She dances. She's dancing to the so title screen. what's happening now is they thwarted the plans of the henchman bad guys. And so they're having a private party. And the girls are only allowed to come if they come in their pajamas. So we're having a private party in the middle of the night, and all the girls are in pajamas. Cute. Half these people are playing the games are just playing the title screen. Oh, that's Quix with a K Q I X. There's John again. Now the thing is, like these two shouldn't be enemies, but they are enemies. Like he's saying, "Sorry, this is a private party. You guys can't stay." The thing is, they're like big fans of the arcade, and they right. spend a lot of money in there, and yeah. they're always exchanging pleasantries. I don't see why this guy should be such a dick to be like, you can't come in. They have a but lot anyway. in common. They both have women fawning over them, right? Yes. They can't talk without women on them. <laughs> like, I don't have any women over my shoulder when I talk. I don't have a single punkette or... Uh, you don't. You, you have two women in your life. They're not... Well, yeah... But they don't they don't fawn. They, they don't, don't fawn. <laughs> yeah, they have to stand behind me. Uh-oh, That'd be arena. great if I went to a party with Sandy and she was like on my uh, arm, you know, sh- her shoulder on my shoulder. Oh, tell him, Carl, you're so funny, haha. She, I'd be dating her for years. <laughs> so what we're watching right now is they're getting ready for a video contest. This is one of the f- right. first right. of many one-on-ones. And they have giant well, it's like, joysticks. if I win, you'll let me stay in the party. But if I lose, I... Vidya, Dorfus, go. So they spent a lot of money on this. Oh, Satan's Hollow. This is Hollow. a real game. So the thing about Satan's Hollow is that every time you shoot an alien from above, a piece of bridge shows up underneath your spaceship. And then you're supposed to move to the right and drop the piece of bridge over the fire. Tell me when I lose you. Over the fiery lava pit. And then when you have uh-huh. enough pieces, look at the people in the background. They're pretending to be interested. And then when you get all the pieces uh, on your right, you can go to the second board on the right, and that is a giant demon. Torfist, stop eating your hamburger and, right. and get to the that, game. Right. That's what McGinnis is saying. Scott, the Scott brother. He's yeah. saying, Torfist, stop eating. Torfist. Start playing. Oh, see, Torfist has got a drink. Like, video has gone pretty far. Oh, no. Yeah. Guess who will win? So, wait, if they have a giant choice, like, where's the fire button? Uh, there is a fire button. They keep pumping. Uh, I don't see it. I see the joystick, but I'm telling you, there's a... The joystick is a giant bowling ball attached to a metal pole to the ground, and that's what they're moving around in this the arena. But there's no fire button. Or maybe it's on the joystick. I I swear to you, I remember seeing it. I don't know where it is right now. I just see the joystick like you. Oh, Dorfus dropped the candy bar. Now he distracts him, and boom, his kitty blows up. So now all Dorfus has to do is just play and beat the score. Oh, there's, there's the, the fire thing. Did you see it? Oh, uh, yeah, it's on the actual knob. Yeah. It's a good piece now, of it. There's something funny that the internet points out, and I rewatched the scene to see. They're on a big thing like this with the joysticks in the ground, and they're playing Pac-Man. Right. And they're and they're clicking the like shooter. Remember, I like this movie because it's genuine with the video games, right? Right. But these kids who are being actors did not know the video game because there's no firing in Pac-Man. You just yeah right. move. Well, there was a time when Pac-Man had was had a gun. And he was like, he. Was, that's how they became ghosts. I don't know if you know that, but Clyde. Right, he, that was he, a late, late version. They were actually human beings until Pac-Man shot him in cold blood. 
and then their <sighs> ghost haunted Pac-Man until he ate a power pellet, and then he would eat the ghosts as a further humiliation. Yeah! Dorfus won! Dorfus won <laughs> Satan's Hollow! He's still playing, in fact. Dorfus, you can stop playing, man. Dorfus, stop playing, man. Jesus fucking Christ. Dorfus. Wow, this is a cool arcade. I'm surprised it's not it closed. I can't believe Fun and Games closed. Fun and Games is shut down. So you see that he has like a, uh, a bridge built, but there's like a piece missing. Is that weird? There you go. You got that piece in there. Yeah. That's weird. Now, Dorfus, who's playing right now, he was in a horrible car accident, and it ended his career. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Holy shit. He, did, he was brought back to life, but he stayed in the hospital two years. The surgeons had to You're do this, like, me. rebuilding his hip thing with titanium, and he had to go. You know, it was like 10 years of his life going through rehabilitation. So by 84, his career was over. It started in 78. He was in Surf 2, remember, right. that yeah. we were talking about. He was that was 84. Then he had the car accident. So, And then he had the car accident after this movie. I after if... Surf 2 in 84. This was 80... Yeah, two years before his life went to crap. Wow, so I wonder, what, uh, I wonder how he is. Today, he's not doing well. He's got a site on the internet for his daughter's maid to raise money for him. He has some new medical condition like diabetes and he's not doing well. <laughs> it's him. You can see it's him from his eyes and everything, but right. he's got the big beard and he's not a slob. He does look thinner, believe it or not, but he's not doing well. Well, he has this look that's like, it's almost a little too real. You know how like get this mm -hmm. Hollywood slob and, yeah. uh, What's funny about him in this is that uh, he's first off he's like four <laughs> eleven. God, that's, that's, I can't make fun of the guy knowing that he spent a decade of his life and you know two years in in the hospital. He keeps finding his daughter in there. Right. Tough guy. Tough guy. He's a you tough guy. idiots better look at Joe Don. You want us? Don't do me any favors, you idiots. Look at his jacket suit, his suit jacket. It looks like a big top, man. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. And he has no undershirt. He's just like, fuck it, I'll unbutton a shirt, put on my jacket. He, he doesn't have a t-shirt? No. Look at that. It's all chest. Wow. He looks like, you know who that guy looks like? He looks like John Sales, the director who acts sometimes. Don't know him. John Sales. Heard John the Sales. Name, actually. He's done a bunch of movies about New Jersey, directed Madawan. Mm -hmm. Uh he was an eight it. man out. He was one of the uh, Black Sox. Don't know it. Okay, so here we go. Hello. Uh, I'm so great to have the newscast, uh, news report here. Every day, right. the, the newscasters are outside the arcade. What they did is they paid a bunch of people to pretend protest. Rudder was determined to close us down from the moment he walked into this place. The man's a driven asshole. No, no, you don't see what I mean. He was there when Alvin and Lola ran out with their tops off. He thinks we're running a bordello. Bordello? Yes, you should have seen the expression on the druggist's face when I picked up these slides this morning. Look at this one. What, what are you yeah, doing? you see that our nerd here, yeah. he ended up being like, um, he was a, he did, he stayed in movies with a lot of cartoons. Do you know Osmosis Jones? Yeah, sure, Osmosis Jones, the uh, Bob. He was Peter assistant Ferguson. production manager. Looney Tunes, Back in Action, Brother Bear 2, a kid's show. Uh, he didn't have much career as an actor, but he stayed in Hollywood. So he did a lot of like animation production? Yeah, or was a part of production manager, assistant production manager. That's not too bad. And nope, it's, not and it's too funny bad. to have, like, oh, I also started Joysticks in 1983. <laughs> right. You were in the movie, weren't you, Grandpa? Yes, I was. That's right. I played Dorfus's best friend, Eugene. That's right. You were funny, Grandpa. So I got to tell you, this director, I mean, talk about white privilege. This guy like lives a very charmed life. Graydon yeah. Clark. 
So he also made a movie which I would love to see. I've always heard of and read about it. It's not Warren Beatty and Shampoo. Do you know the movie Shampoo with Warren Beatty and how big yes, it was? Yes, yes. So Grady and Clark made a movie around that time called Black Shampoo. Okay. And it was about an African-American barber who had his own beauty salon. And he was basically <laughs> Warren Beatty. And the movie was called Black Shampoo. It's, that's a, it's exploitation. Yeah, it's exploitation of several ways. They exploit a movie that people know by just rename, you know. Yes. It's amazing. He, I mean, I just, it's, it's, it makes me numb to think like they actually put it on the marquee. Black Shampoo. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, Mont is proud to present privilege. Black Shampoo. Here's a newspaper ad promoting Black Shampoo. <laughs> so blatant obvious oh what a giveaway so he also is an actor uh, he was in Satan's Sadus he played a biker named Acid so he's he's a, no stranger to the Hollywood B movie wait you're talking about Joe Don Baker no I'm talking Mr. about Rutter? the director uh, Great and Clark oh, oh, oh okay okay I can't believe there's like still half this movie left. Didn't they just run out of storyline? No. No, right, right now they're doing threats. It's the first time that they've said, I'm going to bury you. It's come down to it. But that's all Joe Don Baker does is threat. Oh, Pac-Man cuts in. Yeah, Pac-Man swipes by. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. You don't like that? Nuke the arcade. You think it's cheap or what do you think? Well, I mean, I always, I've seen this movie a couple of times and I always thought they just used it without permission. And now that you tell me that, you know, they were really strange. It was a Japanese company called Namco that came out with Pac-Man. That's right, so, Namco. So Midway, think of like, uh, think the World Fair in, uh, in Chicago. There was a Midway, right? Mm -hmm. Where they had the World's Fair and then they even had a Midway airport. So here's a Chicago company that made pinball machines and they were called Midway. And... Um, they agreed to produce American video cabinets of Pac-Man, and not only it became a hit, but some of the pro yeah. American programmers, uh, Pac-Man became such a hit that like anything that looked like Pac-Man made money. So you and I played Puck-Man at the Chicken Basket in Montclair, New Jersey. Right. We, uh, we played the knockoff the knock -off galores, and they were making a lot of money. So Midway said, you know what, we should make a, a sequel. You know, why don't we, we'll have a map and we'll change the maps and we'll have moving fruit. Is it Super Pac-Man or Mrs. Pac-Man? Ms. Pac-Man was an American creation. It was the engineers of Midway who came up with a variation of Pac-Man and showed it to Namco. And Namco said, okay, we'll release it. And they did. Well, I think they might have released it and then Namco caught up with them and said, wait a minute. So, <clears throat> well, okay, so... When I researched this movie, it talked about Namco doing the original Pac-Man, and it said that Midway did a bunch of sequels, Super Pac-Man, Mrs. Pac-Man. Right. The thing is, I think Namco, even though they might not have liked it at first or something, like, what do you think you do? They, uh, <laughs> it was making money, and they made a partnership, and I think Yeah, well, that's the, the end, thing. They made a lot of money. They probably made more money off Ms. Pac-Man, uh, all mm -hmm. this done than Pac-Man. So there was, there was the Pac-Man sequels, if I may. There was Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man. There was right. Pro Professor. And Super Pac-Man Pac is featured in this movie. Yeah. And Super okay. Pac-Man is, is a game where uh, you you eat a power pellet and you become even bigger, mm -hmm. and you eat through these bar door barriers that appear in the maze. Otherwise, you now you eat. saw that John Grier came through the window, right? Right. He's been all sorts of crazy behavior. The house that they're in. Right now, they're just making a pact with the devil kind of thing. He says, if you screw up the arcade for me, you know, be my boy, play in the, like, contest against them, then I'll give you your own video game. And he's, like, the punk is super into that. Uh -huh. This house right now was the house of Nat King Cole. Wow. Weird. He lent it to them. That's very strange, Carl. This is Nat King Cole's couch and plant piano. and piano. He he sang unbelievable over there, right? 
Uncredible <laughs> in every, in every way. way. In every way. That's why, darling. You know, that's what one cannibal said to him. How you'll stay. You're so inedible. <laughs> that's why, darling, it's inedible. This cabbage you cooked, it's inedible. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I am unedible to... Okay, so there's a lot of stupidness and not funny stuff in this scene, but essentially the deal is struck that he's going to be his boy and in order, he'll get his own video game. Honey, you should really wear a condom. Oh, sweetheart, did I tell you I got snipped? I'm unconceivable. In every way. In every way. But it's sung by his daughter. He was conceivable. Yeah, that's the strange thing. Oh, check it out. I love this scene. They're riding the strangest little buggies down the street. And this is what California is like. Because you, you're still on the East Coast. We both grew up on the East Coast. Yeah. I moved to the West Coast. And we both grew up watching movies like this. showing The movies were right. This is California every day. This is what California is like. Is all these hot little punk girls riding their uh, scooters. Yep. Around. Or grabbing people's nipples and pulling down their pants in the streets. The thing is, this kid is a friend to the arcade. They're wrong to be a jerk to him. Is there like a piano in the arcade? No. That's I don't a, think so. No. But there was at Nat King Cole's house. We're shooting joysticks in Nat King Cole's house. Now, do you remember they snapped a picture of him when he was with those two girls? Sure, I just jerked off to that. Now the reporter's going to be like, you're a frequenter of this arcade. You even like girls with their boobs out. What? That's ridiculous. Well, sir, we have a photo to prove it. Well, produce your photo then. <laughs> so his henchman, his uh, happy, as it were, to his Tony Stark this is just right. an idiot wearing uh, an A's baseball cap and a match. Yeah, a Oakland shirt. A's. Of course, that's L.A., right? I think maybe in the 80s they were Los Angeles. It's no, I think it's A's were athletics, and they always were Oakland. <laughs> okay, now this is like a town council hearing of like, are we keeping the arcade open or closed? And it's filmed in a VFW facility. I don't think that's anything interesting. Oh, but, well, that was a really big FW. When they did. <laughs> John Gryers is going to make like an appearance, and it's funny. He Instead of sitting in the chair, he sits on the chair, and it makes an impression. And that was um, his idea. The inter network oh, yeah. Teach me. You should really check out the latest issue of uh, – the second to last issue of Shock Cinema. They do interview John. And he, Which he, one? It's uh, Shock Cinema. It's not the current issue, okay. but the previous issue. They they interviewed him, and he talked about King Vidya, and he talked about working with Grayston, and he talked about Napoleon Dynamite, which, uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah, he's he is under the radar, but he's really funny in everything he does. Right. Because he, he really is, like, he's just, he's fearless. He's talented. Here, he, talented. What's with this guy with the boombox on his head of the whole movie? That's just 1983. Oh. Uh, You know, his hair is still like 70s, like it's split down the middle. John Travolta. Pac-Man wipe. Pac-Man wipe. Waka, waka, waka. Now, I've made a mistake. I am remiss. I, okay, on the panel of town councilmen is like the mayor in the center there. See the mayor in the center? I know that face. Yeah. I should know his name, you know, and I should be telling you what he's been in right now and everything. You know who I'm talking about, right? You can see you've seen his face before. Well, he's in Joysticks right now. That guy. That guy. No? Huh. They were doing a sexual innuendo joke. Well, this is a ripoff of the nurse from Porky's, right? Or the, the, the coach who's like, <laughs> he stuck his penis and all. Sweating on them, and they don't even clean them off when they're through. Their joysticks are a hot bit of. It's like germs. sexual innuendos. Pac-Man wipes. Well, oh god, I can't believe Pac-Man even makes a noise in his wipes. Wacka wacka wacka. So, Carl, have you ever seen a movie called The Wizard? It's with uh. With Michael Jackson, gonna ease on down, ease on down the road. No, you're not quite right. 
Not the Wiz. Was it a gore film? The Wizard of Gore? Not the Wizard of Gore. No, I haven't seen the film. So it is Fred Savage, and he has a brother who's a little bit on the spectrum, but his brother loves video games. Oh, and her older brother is Christian Slater, and her dad is Bo Bridges. And the youngest kid goes on a trip to go to, I believe, Universal Studios because they're going to premiere a brand new Nintendo game called Super Mario Brothers 3. Well, they don't even tell you what it is. They kind of hinted at it. So uh, he it's a one long advertisement, but it's the same deal as this. Nintendo had a new game they wanted to premiere, and they made a movie to premiere the game. So they would tell people, like, hey, kids, you want to see footage of uh, Super Mario Brothers 3? Then you got to. Uh, Mike, my phone connection with you is suddenly bad. Can I? Should I? Can I call the station back again? Yeah, or? call back if you can't hear me. Okay, I'll All be right. right there. Okay, sounds good, Carl. Okay, Carl's off the air. Thank fucking God. Uh, he's missing a topless scene too. Here, you guys want to hear a topless scene? Oh, hang on, here comes. Carl. Okay, I'm back. Okay, Carl, you're just in time. It's a topless mud wrestling scene. Do you hear me well? Yeah, I hear you. Can you hear me, Carl? No, I'm calling back. All right, call me back, Carl. All right, well, we'll go back to the topless mud wrestling match while uh, Carl calls us back here. Oh, uh, here we go. How about now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Mm, I can't really. I can oh. hear you scratchy, scratchy. Do you want to call it a day? And I could, I have Pam Benjamin Wait, here. Now I hear you again. You said, want to call it a day? Carl, it sounds like I'm going to have to let you go out and replace you because you can't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> so right now you see it's sort of like a dream sequence. Each right. side is telling their side of the story. And our hero, our bad guy's story is it's a brothel. Right. It's a pretty good brothel. <laughs> it's a good brothel. Yeah. It's neat that that's wrestling. just a warehouse. Look at the flames. They was that was actual real fire, and it was in front of the camera. No, well, that's one way of doing it. It's probably the cheapest way to show it. Waka waka waka. Pac Man wipe. But they're they're showing wipes not to, for different scenes. It's the same location. Yeah. Now we're going to see a sort of cloudy dream sequence in which this guy paints a rosy picture in which it's a great place, the arcade, and everyone's angelic. Boy, this film. They really had a lot of time to spare. <laughs> oh, they got babies and flow charts. Shot in 13 days. Wow, that's incredible. And we still watch it. I think I've seen this movie more than 13 times. Whose kid is that? He's nice and quiet. <laughs> not our kids. <laughs> it's not my kid. Not my kid. See, look at that. He has a milkshake. Because, right, there's nice nerd with his milkshake. Yeah, because it's a milkshake parlor. It's, it's like a 1950s uh, sock hop shop. Now, you see, there's the daughter again. Uh, if Daddy, if I want to go to the mall? You know what I don't like about that Valley Girl stuff is she wasn't really doing an imitation of a Valley Girl. Right. She was doing other people's imitations of Valley Girls. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know, but that was what was kind of funny about it because it's so very Southern California anyway. It was very of the day. And what was it? Frank Zappa had some sort of Valley Girl thing? His daughter, Moon Unit, uh, had a hit song called Valley Girl, which he produced. Oh, that was the song, right? Yeah. yeah. And then there was a movie called Valley Girl with uh, Colleen Camp from Surf 2 yeah. and uh, right. Nicolas Cage. And that was 83, maybe. So now he's wrapping up and this ridiculous story about how great the... I'm going to see if his brother... Oh, by the way, here's something that's a little funny that nobody on the internet picked up on. Um, he's addressing the town council or bad guy and he goes, oh, we got trouble. Right here in River City. Uh now, you know what that's from, right? Right, that's from the uh, Music Man. That's, uh, right, right, right. About well, it's funny that nobody picked up on that. I mean, it was so obvious. The guy gets up and he goes, oh, we got trouble. Well, this is basically right here the in River Music City. Man. This is the Music Man, but it's, it's an arcade instead of a pool hall, right? Yeah. And that's, again, it's a generational thing, and we're doing it to our uh, our kids. Yeah. Is that this is the a movie for kids to the eyes of an old hippie. 
Now, this Patsy Klein that's doing the inter, uh, you know, testimony right now, you'll, she was also in Surf 2. Her name oh. was Cindy Lou, remember? Yeah, I Jennifer. do. She's also been in My Favorite Year. That was a pretty good movie. But also for you, Mike, especially, she was in Police Academy 4, Citizens on Patrol. Oh, yes, all right. She played Laura. I know you love the Police Academy movie. I do. I love all eight of them. And the TV yeah. show and the animated show. There was a cartoon show. Did you know the Saturday morning cartoon show? Yes. He goes, you told me you had that photo back. And it's in with his hands. <laughs> So Ted McGinty, Why are you little deceivers? I'm looking What's at Ted, that? I'm looking at the uh, IMDb page for Ted Martin McGinley. Yeah, and there's no mention of his brother. I, I just, it, Scott McGinnis. I just oh, think Scott it's McGinnis. Just, no, right, Scott all right. They're two different. They're two different guys. All right, fair enough. McGinnis <laughs> McGinley. I was kind of was you know, so cheekbones. You know the only there's nothing much more interesting about this. Film. I mean, I said how perfect it was, but the only other interesting thing is the soundtrack was not released at the same time of the movie. Like, they didn't put out the, that was that standard fare. You do a movie, you put out a soundtrack. Right, sure, they because the movie that. is promoting the soundtrack. They were making money in the 80s mm -hmm. off the soundtrack. All the, it, the, the mayor saying, we don't see any cause that we must shut the arcade. Just we hear a guy doesn't like it. Yeah. Delta House, Delta House. Yeah, right. But he's like, but that doesn't, you know, we'll be watching you. Now we got to go. The uh, community theater needs the stage for our house, our town. This guy looks like the greatest American hero after he fell on his face a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> he's a pretty really ugly great, greatest American hero. That guy was like, William Kitt's a good-looking man. This guy is not. Oh, dead rat. Yeah, what they're trying to do now is say, we'll have you shut down from the health commission when we plant dead rats in your arcade. That's disgusting. What, did I be carrying a dead rat around with me until this moment? Usually Act 3 is the time for the court courtroom trial like they just had. Not in this movie. In this movie, it's like a plot point of Act 2. I know. Well, that's the thing. It's like I really think this movie has run out of steam. There's nothing more they can do to this. Has they have they shown boobs? No. Have they shown? There's been so boobs? many boobs. How many boobs do you think we've seen so far? Actually, Mike, you know what's funny? It's always the same two girls. They show out their boobs throughout the film, but You're it's right. always the same two girls. You're right. The video girls don't show their boobs. So we see four tits. Displayed 80 times. Okay, now they're having a contest thing. Like, I'll, I'll take you on. They're doing a Pac-Man thing again. Well, it's all settled in. Shall we say, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning? The big 11, Rudder! I gotta eat my breakfast first! Okay, calm Come down, Bush, man. You're in training. Yeah. No two All right. Now, huh? You sure you know where that slob kid lives? <laughs> so Never they now just made a contest game. your best player against mine and what they're going to go is go kidnap his best player no that means you don't want me to call him fat slop right no we're talking Dorfus Dorfus yes Dorfus which is weird because it's not a dork dwarf I've been called a dork do we yeah. have uh, doofus, doof. Yeah, see, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, like doofus. Dorfus sounds like doofus. Dork? It's like a mixture of doofus and dorkus. But you know, a dork is a peepee, -pee, right? I don't think of a peepee -pee when I see Dorfus. <laughs> no, I do think of a doofus. Dork will, will give his seat up to a pregnant lady, but Dorfus would ignore her and keep going. Dork <laughs> would be friendly to his grandmother. But Dor don't you ever read that comic strip? Yes. Yes. Dorfus. Dork and Doofus. <laughs> Dork and Doofus. Okay. Truth is, I don't. I mean, I read the comics in our Sunday paper, but you don't read the comics in 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 Boy's Life. You don't read True Scout Adventures. 
Did you know that some scout was like walking and he tripped and he was able to rescue himself? It's rescue true. Rescue himself? No, I didn't. Well, I mean, he well, well usually he rescues like there's usually a story of like a boy scout on a hike and he rescues somebody, or he gets into trouble and he uses his skills to save himself. And it's a one-page cartoon in Boy's Life. Okay, wait. I have to tell you a plot point, okay? Because it's Act 3 now. Yeah, all right. They're going to have the big contest, but Doofus is missing because he's been kidnapped. So now our hero has to be the one to play the game. Look, I but see the more thing boobs. Is, you never boobs. play a game. I see and it's boobs. because the he had this girlfriend and like there was some traumatic event that had to do with video games. And now, even though he used to be the greatest player in the world, he can't play anymore because of the trauma with the girlfriend. You see, he's telling his heart, pouring his heart out now. So we're going to do a Rocky going into training thing in which he gets it back. So the video games have only existed for eight months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the beginning of the first eight, the first month, he got his heart broken, and, he, and then he retired. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's been almost six weeks. <laughs> they still have this asteroid. Once again, look at that kid's face. He's not a nerd. He's like a really cool kid who's in nerd clothing. He keeps saying that. Why do you keep saying that? Look at this. Oh, this is This is with man. the girlfriend. You see all those candles? What a fire hazard, right? Yeah, but she's topless. That's the third woman. Unless it's the same woman. You're right. That's not the same one. And I, w I was interrupting you earlier just because I wanted you to note the uh, posters on the walls of, of random topless girls. So it's not just the human beings in this movie. No, it's... This is the old girlfriend, and he's going to have a trauma event, and he can't play video games anymore. So basically what we're doing is, as a 1980s audience, we're getting to see Some sexual things, which... Pornography gets us today. Well, I, you know, it's a porn. I know the kids learn about porn and how to make love on, on Red Tube, but we watched it through these movies, and it's very important to rub your nipples together. Right. In an embrace. The truth is, I didn't know what you were supposed to do, right? Right. I always saw, like, implications and kissing in movies and nakedness, and then it would, like, turn away to the. Okay, that's the dad, and you see the trauma's happening right, happening right now. But he's fake punching her. He's slapping his hand near his face. Ouch, I got smacked. Goodness, that sounds like a trauma. That means you couldn't play anymore. I just so shook up. This is so <laughs> stupid. It's so B movie. Your girlfriend's topless, and her dad walks. Are you in there, and Mike? <laughs> Here, you can count on me, Jeff. There we go. Now we're going to see our Rocky Make montage. Sure you only have a Use them I don't know why Sid Us would get you ready for video game Never playing, but the Hesitation can be more he's reading them the, the manual. I know, it's so funny. I don't know, it's goofy, like 80s uh, official magazines. Oh, these are cool, these handheld Pac-Man machines. They still sell them. Nurture is a good coach. Nerd, he's nurturing him. So, what happened? Nothing. Where was okay. I? It's time to go to the joystick. Oh, no, you're I don't think it's I can do it. Bailey, get up there and do it. Time to go to the ring. Oh, no, man. Come on, Rock. It's ridiculous it's that they're ridiculous. in the back room of the place. And they're like, okay, wait here a minute. I'll be right back. And they're in there for 45 minutes doing. But what's even weirder is that the nerd, the nerd guy usually It's has fake Pac-Man again. Look, he's kneeling towards the screen of the of the game. And he's what like, a ripoff that is. Such a weird... I don't movie. understand why Midway permitted that. Yeah, they used a total Pac-Man ripoff in a game that was endorsed by Pac-Man in a movie. He's physically, mentally ready. All right. Okay, there we go. So you see that bird on the right side? That is from a game called Phoenix. Yeah, that's a real game, but... Yeah, Phoenix. Oh, no, it's just their symbols for some reason. No, but that, that bird is from the game Phoenix. 
It's a monster you shoot. This is lo- see that bird is up there. This is long before Twitter. Okay. It's the Phoenix bird. I don't think you're hearing me. All right, Carl, can you hear me? I do hear you. All How right. are you? All right. Here we go. We're playing the final match, Super Pac-Man. Super. Mm-hmm. Come on, concentrate, big ball, big ball. Come on, help me, please. Come on. What are we? Oh no. See, he's remembering the trauma. No, this can't be happening. Glad they. He's like, it's coming oh, back to the trauma. What are we doing? Help. Mean dad. All right. So the sequel to Pac-Man. It was Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man. Uh, Professor yeah, and this Pac-Man is Super was a tri- Pac-Man. Super Pac-Man. There was Professor Pac-Man, which was a trivia game. There was Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man. There's Kidnapped uh, Dorf Doofus. Machine. There's Baby Pac-Man, which was half pinball machine, half video game. There was Pac-Landia, which I really like, which is basically... There was Baby Pac-Man? Yeah, Baby Pac-Man was a half pinball machine, half video game. So uh-huh. you, would play, you would play pinball, and then the ball would go into a hole, and then the screen would activate, and you'd play Pac-Man. There's Pac-Mania. That's how they kidnapped him? They put bacon in his mouth and tied him yeah, up with... Yeah, and he's uh, tied up. He's not even tied up. Now, here is the mom. Yes. And I don't right. understand the plot point, but she just now woke up and she's horny. Well, Doesn't make sense, but... She just she just randomly sleep slept with him. Uh, she, oh yeah, he was flatulent, and she associates that with sex because of the dream. It's stupid. Anyway, now he's going to be like, if you let me go, I'll get four or five studs, and we'll all do you. And she's like, oh yes, <laughs> Super Pac Man. Super Pac Man, got a fire. Hit the fire button. Pew pew. Or what? Hit the fire button. That's what they do. Wow. Whacka, whacka, whacka. Whacka, whacka, whacka. Super Pac-Man's kind of fun. It's weirder. Yay! Yay. You're down to your last man. How did they hook up these video machines so that... uh, Okay, here's the mayor, right? And so... Uh, mirrors hanging out our hero there. says to our nerd friend, I make you ambassador of the video arcade. Go take care of the mayor. And so that's what the nerd does. And he gives him free tokens. Oh. And the mayor gets to try the games. And, of it's course, he loves them. So now he's all for the arcade. He's pressing a button on the joystick. Hello, uh, Mr. The assistant Mayor. manager here at the ah, establishment. See? Yeah, can I help you? Uh, oh, no, thank you, Eugene. I just thought I'd come down here and have a cordial look around for myself. Uh-huh. Yeah, yes, sure. well, then as a way of making you feel welcome, can I present you Here's a free token. token so you can play the games? Oh, this game to me. Play. Sure, I love a prostitute. No, sir, sir, token. Oh, I couldn't. I can. All right, just one prostitute. Sir, for less time, they're just... It's like having tokens. only one Dorito. You can't. You gotta lay them all. Oh, he's playing... He explains what tokens are. Instead of quarters, we use these. Oh, that is... Oh, that's Gorf. This is one of my favorite games. So, Gorf is G-O-R-F. And it was... Oh, yeah. Which, spelled backwards, is Frog. And it has four different styles of Pac-Man... Of uh, Space Invaders. So the first board is like Space Invaders. The second one so is like... So he's Max. basically teaching them how to play, and he's going to fall in love with it. All right, there you go. All right. <laughs> okay, so that's all it takes. Now he's going to become addicted. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. you can do it. I know. What's the matter, Bailey? Well, See, they're pushing this? the fire buttons for yeah. no reason. Also, these games don't last more than two minutes. Back to Dorfus, right, stupid. A marathon experience, <laughs> unlike anything you've had before. Oh, let all these this is unlike anything I've had before. <sighs> yes, yes, but but what I'm talking about is your wildest fantasies come to life. Oh. We'll meet again tonight. Oh. And I will have other young, 
strong bodies with me. Oh. Yes, and even even some, I know you're not going to believe this, better than This is so bad. It's better not believable she's, yes. you know, yes, be buying his bullshit. Right. Yeah, he's tied up on the be- on the couch. Like how, how the whole know? premise is skewed and wrong. I mean, she wouldn't be this horny for what? Well, she's, she's a guy. Married, she's married to Cho Dunn. This guy must be. She associates farting with sex. John, John's getting sick. Sick of it. Even though he's uh, packing his coffee. I win again. Mayor's into it. Mayor's into it. He's lowering his tie. He's, he's playing he's, Galaxia. That's dwarf. That's dwarf. Galaxia. Dwarf. That's dwarf, but he's playing Galaxia. Henchman on the scene. Well, they let everybody in this arcade. <laughs> Mike, maybe I have to call back. Maybe you can't hear me. No, I hear you, Carl. Oh, there you are. There yeah. you are. Okay. This game now, is I so don't know boring. why, but the whole crowd is like draggy ass. Like they're tired of it. They're tired of it, too. They've yeah. been playing the same Apple board over and over again. You're down to your last man. Doesn't when Pac Man die, he looks like your wallet being thrown to the ground? Rip, rip, rip. Oh, I got a pocket full of quarters and I'm headed to the arcade. I got Pac-Man fever. Pac-Man fever. Going out of my mind. Going out of my mind. That's a Ted Nugent song, right? No, it's a group called Buckner and Garcia. And they had a whole album of video game songs. They had, uh-huh. come on, come on, and do the Donkey Kong. Here comes evil Otto, press the fire. Button. Okay, here comes Dorcas, he escaped. You can't hold me back, mister. Together we shall win. I think I'm going berserk. I think I'm losing my mind. All right. Dorf is like, let me in, let me in, tap me in. Tap They're going to switch horses in the middle of a race. That's really bad because the stream will carry the horses away. Wait, now what? he decides, he sees him playing since the trauma. And he's like, you know what? You got it, bro. You need the help. Overcome your phobia yeah. of playing video games. The worst phobia of them all. <laughs> You've got bleep blorka. Oh, a phobia. He he's a, he has bleep blorka. Yeah. Look at him pushing the button. Nobody knew what Pac Man was. Oh, well, you gotta press the button, man. Also, it's important to stretch every vein in your neck while playing video games. That way you know you're, you're playing hard. Hey, the crowd's interested again. They're coming alive. I like that. Where's John Greer? Where's that blonde Breyer? guy? There's that guy. The guy with the V-deck shirt. He's fucking great. He's like, I'm a surfer, dude. Look at him. He's in every shot. I would like to see Wacko. That seems kind of like. Look how freaking out he. Look how disappointed he is. He's just like. Joe Don's losing it. Oh, God! No, wait! Does that mean I don't did my own video game? Oh, no! No! It's exactly what it means. He didn't win. Yeah, right. He got off. Yep. How do they hook up a video arcade to play from a giant joystick on the ground and then listen, you two idiot henchmen? What are you two henchmen doing? I'm playing Dor Gorf. I like this stuff, Mayor. You idiot. There was a sequel. Blow it out your ass. There was a sequel to Gorf that never got released. It was called Ms. Gorf. It's really important to uh, highlight. Have a close up of someone's eyes when they're playing video games. Look at them apple. Yep. You like those apples? Board seven. How do you like those apples? How do you like them apples? Yay, yay, me, me. Yay. Look, I'm acting. But the game's I'm still acting. going. The game's still going. I, I had a quarter in there. 
And roll them. You two idiots. You henchmen, I'm going to toss Bunk you their heads one of my hand. I'm going to choke you individually. I'm going to bonk your heads together. Oh, here comes the- I'm going to smack you into the strike. Does this mean we don't get the video machines for the tent? Why can't my daddy be like everybody else's and stay home and barbecue? She's great. I like the daughter. Why can't my daddy be like all other daddies? and can stay home and barbecue. Just be the idiot daddy like every other daddy. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to the arcade. He? Okay. There's, look, he's now at the point of bonking their head. I know. It's so <laughs> funny. I hate when people do that. Really. Okay. Here's Grandpa. Okay. He's yeah, the back. money behind the oh, video. Grandpa, you missed it. I was able to play again. It was so great. Oh, that's wonderful, Jeff. That's wonderful. And I got more wonderful news for you. I've been looking for a friend of yours, and I found her. It's Trauma Girl! Sandy. Bring those boobs over here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to look at her with her shirt on. Like, I kind of recognize her. I am so jealous! This guy. It looks like the, then he goes, of the nurse, the sexy nurse. La- you know, like, that's my nurse. This guy needs to get laid. Everyone laughs at the nerd again. Oh, whack, yeah, he's whack. groping the girl. Somebody got to get this boy laid. <laughs> now they're going to the motel to get him laid. Wait, what's this has to do about video games, Carl? Carl, the movie's over. We're done. This is about There's no more video, games. Much as video games. I know he's going to have to get laid, but this has nothing to do with Super Pac-Man. So let's uh, cut the show short now. How much time do we have left in this movie? Fuck, you better get laid. He has like three minutes. It's Hi. time for love stuff. There he is, the not nerd. Hello, and it's man. Mrs. Hey, Bad Guy. Mrs. Rudder. Um, I'm Eugene Groby. And um, I'd like you to meet Simba. Oh, Losing his virginity. I love it. Like, oh, yeah, let me the moral of the story is you get laid, man. You... Oh, look, Scott McGinnis. Scott McGinnis. Not the brother. Not the brother. He's not Ted McGinley's brother. Scott McGinnis is someone else. Morgan Lofting. That's Mrs. Rudder. Artie is she John 